This is the behind the scenes on how I make all my video content from long form YouTube videos and podcasts to the short form vertical videos that go on LinkedIn, TikTok, and YouTube shorts. By the end of this video, you'll be able to do the exact same thing because you'll have all of the equipment that I use and the workflows and processes that I follow. Let's dive right in. So let's start off with the equipment and setup that I use. As you can see right now, I'm talking into a Rode mic with a mini tripod. Now I also have this Shure mic here, which I really do like too. This actually plugs into your USB, but they make a ton of different adapters and forms. I've also used Yeti mics in the past, which I think for beginners are a great option and they're a little bit more affordable, but I actually think for the overall value versus the price that you pay, stepping up your audio game is worth it. So I'm gonna use these mics for my long form videos when I'm in my actual mini studio here and I'm recording long form YouTube videos or my podcast. If I'm on the go or I'm recording a lot of short form vertical videos, I'm definitely going to use my wireless lapel mics. And usually either that's the Comica wireless mic or the Movo wireless mic. Both of them are good options and won't break the bank. What I love about the stationary mics is they're better quality and typically the frequency is less up and down. Sometimes with those lapel mics, when you start talking up, it really goes up on the volume. And then when you're low, it drops a little bit low. It's usually not a big problem. And a lot of the times you can fix it in post-production anyways, but these stationary mics are just next level quality. Now on top of my Sony DSLR, which I'll show you here in a second, I've got another shotgun road mic that clips on the top of my camera that I can take with me on the go. If I'm filming on the go, I typically have that. And then I also have the lapel mics. If I'm interviewing somebody or I'm shooting content with the client, they'll typically wear one of those Comica or one of those Movo mics. So that's the audio. Let's move to video. For my video, I'm only typically using two things. One is the Sony DSLR. I do like this for 4K shooting or if you're doing shots that require a little bit more than the average smartphone can do. I record most of my long form videos on the Sony DSLR. The quality on these are pretty good. I'm just not a fan of the functionality. You got an SD card, the buttons and functionality are just kind of old school. It's not as easy as click one button and it's on my computer in a second like it would be from an iPhone to a MacBook. But for long form videos and high quality shots, I do think they're worth it. Now on the flip side, I would say that 90% of my videos are made with my smartphone because really in today's day, that's all you actually need. I definitely could make all of my podcasts and all of my long form videos with my smartphone. All right, let's talk about try tripods real quickly. You definitely want to pick up a tripod or two. Right now I've got one that's basically permanently in my studio and that's the one my DSLR sits on. And then I've got another tripod that I keep in my backpack that basically I take that wherever I go or from shooting short form vertical videos. It's just easier for me to have the two because I'm a big fan and I would recommend you do the same thing. Try to create a studio like setup to where when you come in the place where you're going to shoot videos and I'm mostly talking about long form here, make it to where you basically can come into the studio setup and you can just turn a couple things on and boom, you're ready to go. If it's got to be this long process where it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes to set everything up, you're just less likely to do it because it's putting more friction and barriers between you and creating the content. That being said, I remember when I was in my one bedroom apartment, first making video content, and I literally had to set things up in my dining room table. So you got to work with what you got. And sometimes you just got to push through it. Let's move on to lighting. Lighting is extremely important. I think it's one of the most underrated aspects of actually making video content. Great lighting can give you a really great shot, even if the camera is not the best. Bad lighting can make a great camera look like crap. So whether you're talking DSLR or you're talking a smartphone, you need to make sure you have solid lighting. If you're outside, you've got certain opportunities with the angle and the time of day to get some really great shots with natural lighting. If you're by a window and you've got the light coming in on you, you can get some really high quality shots just by using what nature has to offer, which is the sun. But in many cases, we don't have the exact lighting that we want outside, or maybe we're inside in our studio, in our living room, in our home office, and we wanna create high quality content, but maybe the lighting isn't cooperative which is why you're gonna want a couple pieces of equipment when it comes to lighting. The first thing, and you've probably heard this before, but a ring light. I'm a big fan of the Loom Cubes. I think they make really good products. And that's what I'm using right here. That's the light that's right here. And then I've got two newer side lights right here on my right and right here on my left. Now the side lights are key because if you just have the ring light, a lot of times you're gonna get a ton of shadows. It's gonna be a darker picture because it can only create so much light. Where the side lights, you can actually point one up. You can have one coming right at you. You can position them. It gives you a lot more options. And I would definitely say that I'm not a master at lighting, but it's something I'm working towards getting better at. But having multiple different lights that you can position in unique ways to make sure that you're lit up well and there's not major shadows or anything crazy going on is a must. And in terms of any additional equipment, I've got a few things here behind me that you can see that are really more just accent type things. That's the green lighting behind here. It's the greenery. It could potentially be art or a plaque or whatever you want to have on there. I would always just recommend that it's not just a plain wall. There should be something visually appealing behind you. And as a side 
side note, I've got my laptop here and then I've got my standing desk where I can elevate up and elevate down. That allows me to bring the mic right here and I have my computer right here. So I've got my notes here. So as I'm kind of talking in the camera, I can look over to my right, check my notes, and then go right back into looking directly in the lens of the camera. Now, once I get done filming, the raw video clips go right into my G drive into a raw videos folder. Now, here's the key with this. I've got a workflow built out in Trello and you could do this in monday.com or click up or whatever it is. But basically raw content comes in, the editors or the content directors pick it up, they move it along and now it's in progress. Once it's completed, it's put in ready to review. If everything's good, it goes into ready to be archived and posted content. Once it's posted, it moves into posted content and it's now completed the entire workflow. Now what I would definitely recommend and something that we do is set up some automations in something like a Zapier. So for example, as soon as I dump in one of those video files in my G drive, there's a Zapier automation that automatically creates a card in Trello with the video in there. So I'm not having to create a card, attach the video, let somebody know that it's in there. I just dump it in the raw video file and it starts the automation on its own. All I got to do is go in and check the video, verify that it's good. If there's any revisions, we'll make the revisions. And then I move it on the back end when I move it into edited videos ready to be scheduled and archived. There's another automation there that moves the video into two places. One is a G drive filled with videos that are ready to be posted so I can snatch them up there, schedule them, distribute them out on the platforms. And then two, it also moves a copy of that video into my archived folder where I store all my video content and content in general. And you definitely want to archive your videos and all of your content because there's going to be moments in time where you want to reuse that content. Or maybe you've ran out of ideas and you don't know what to talk about anymore. And well, if you've got 100, 200, 300 pieces of content to go through, you're either going to be able to use some of that content again or a minimum remix some of those ideas and concepts or tweak them a little bit and get them out there. So definitely keep all of your content, have a system and process so that it keeps things smooth and on track and as efficient as you possibly can. Because we all know one of the main reasons people stop creating content or don't stay consistent is because they don't have a good workflow or process or systems or habits behind it. Now, I do get a lot of questions about our editing, so I will say this. I don't edit my own videos and neither do our clients. Why? Because we want that time to put back into our business, to spend time with family, spend time with clients, travel, whatever we're trying to do. We would rather pay somebody that's really good and that's a professional to do that stuff for us so we could focus on the things that we need to get done. That's the best way to do it in my mind. And if you're a company listening to this, I guarantee you have the resources to do that because your time is the most valuable asset you have. So I'm always going to pay somebody to get more time back in my day. And you'd probably do the same thing. In terms of how we edit and what we use, we do some things on the front end with AI. For example, we'll use something like a Descript or Runway or other platforms like that. And we'll be able to transcribe the video. Perhaps we'll do auto captions. We'll be able to use silence detection to remove the silent gaps in the video, remove the ums and ahs and filler words. We can use those tools to remove a background or do rotoscoping, green screen, things like that. But for most of our videos, once it's past that, it goes into Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects, where we're adding some of the really cool graphics and animations that you just can't do in some of these other simple editing tools. Now, if you're going to edit videos on your own or by yourself, or if you've got maybe a partner in your business, or you've got a content director that's doing a lot of the behind the scenes content work, I would advise that they use something like a Descript, because it really is an all in one. You're not going to be able to do high level editing and stuff like that, that you could in Adobe Premiere Pro or something like a Filmora or a DaVinci, but it's going to give you the opportunity to add titles, captions, green screen, remove filler words, silence detection, transcribe, all that type of stuff. Now, the thing we didn't get into is how I repurpose long form video content into short form video content. You can kind of see how that's done based on the workflow and how it would go, but I do have a lot to say on that and a ton of value to share with you. So that's in another video. Now, if you're curious about any of the equipment that I used and you want to pick some of this stuff up, I put the description and the links in the show notes. Feel free to snatch them up. And please, if you've got questions on any of the stuff that I covered today or anything that I left out that you're curious about, drop them in the comments and I will jump in there and answer them. And if this was valuable for you, I would recommend that you hit the subscribe button right now so you don't miss the next video. We'll see you around.